Little is known about Francois Toussaint's early years, despite his birth on May 20, 1743. It is thought that Gao Guinyu, the younger son of the monarch of the West African kingdom, Alada, was his father. His family was taken to the Caribbean and sold into slavery. Luckily, Toussaint was raised by wise masters who taught him how to read and write. He was greatly influenced by the political philosophers of the Enlightenment and the classics he read. He also grew to have a strong devotion to Catholic doctrine. Because of his intelligence and diligence, Toussaint excelled in both horsemanship and the use of medicinal plants. He soon attained the position of chief steward on the plantation after being acknowledged for his abilities by his master. According to legend, he was freed in 1776, the year the U.S. announced its separation from Great Britain. While still employed by his previous employer, Toussaint got married to Suzanne Simone Baptiste in 1782. Three children were born to the couple, Saint-Jean, Isaac, and Placide. Slaves in the western half of Hispaniola, in the French colony of Saint-Domingue, rose up in rebellion on August 22, 1791. Slaves started killing white people without repercussions, driven by generations of mistreatment and the inspiration of the French Revolution. Francois Toussaint was initially undecided. He was managing a plantation for his previous master, farming a small plot of land and raising a family at the age of almost 50. However, the uprising started to spread and eventually moved to Toussaint's residence. His desire to protect his way of life wasn't the only reason he decided to join the rebellion. Additionally, Toussaint was greatly impacted by the Enlightenment philosophers John Locke and Jean-Jacques Rousseau, who wrote about human equality as well as his Catholic faith, which forbade slavery. In order to protect his wife and family from the uprising, Toussaint first made sure they were safe in the eastern part of the island, which was under Spanish rule. Then he made sure the family of his former master was on a boat headed for America. When Toussaint joined the rebels led by Georges Biassou, they were fighting France together with the Spanish. Toussaint had acquired knowledge of African and Creole herbal remedies while he was a slave. In addition to being a soldier, he now provided medical care to the troops. After gaining notoriety fast, Toussaint was given command over 600 former slaves who were black. His forces increased gradually to 4,000 men and were well organized. After escaping slavery, Jean-Jacques Dessalines joined Toussaint and soon rose to the rank of close, capable lieutenant. During this period, Toussaint took on the surname Louverture, which is derived from the French word meaning opening or opening the way. As the Caribbean islands erupted in rebellion, European nations fought each other for control. The British government feared that the slave uprising would extend to Jamaica, a nearby colony. The British dispatched troops to quell the slave uprising in an attempt to sabotage the French. The French National Convention took action to protect its colonial rule and win the support of the black populace because it feared defeat. All black people in the empire were granted freedom and citizenship by France in 1794. Nevertheless, the British soldiers were unwavering in their resolve to destroy France's shaky hold on Saint-Domingue. Toussaint changed his allegiance and sided with the French against Spain after France decided to free its slaves. His first task was to attack the eastern part of the island, Santa Domingo, which was governed by the Spanish. Now he was up against his former black colleagues, who continued to support Spain. Troops led by Toussaint were successful in seizing Santa Domingo. Spain withdrew from Hispaniola, and hostilities between France and Spain were terminated by the Treaty of Basel, which was signed in July 1795. The remaining British forces were contained by Toussaint, making them useless, and they quickly left the island as well. Toussaint was the colony's most important military and political figure by 1796. Admired by the former slaves he would help free, he was also highly esteemed by the numerous French officials who, in theory, continued to rule Saint-Domingue. After securing a brief truce with the European powers, Toussaint turned his attention to the internal discontent that persisted on the island. The mulatto population, who did not own slaves, had owned slaves prior to 1791. Many wished for their return. With Dessalines' assistance, Toussaint was able to vanquish the mulatto army in 1799. 
There were allegations of atrocities carried out by Dessalines' army during the year-long contest. Now, Toussaint ruled the entire island of Hispaniola in a de facto capacity. He presented a constitution that reaffirmed the outlawing of slavery and named himself Governor General for Life, endowing him with almost limitless authority. In an attempt to restore stability to Hispaniola, he embarked on a mission to revive agriculture and enhance the local economy. In exchange for sugar and a pledge not to invade Jamaica or the American South, Toussaint forged trade agreements with the British and the Americans, who provided his forces with goods and weapons. He permitted plantation owners who had fled the uprising to return, in defiance of the laws enacted during the French Revolution. In addition to instituting military discipline on the workforce, he also implemented reforms that enhanced working conditions. Napoleon Bonaparte took over as the French Revolutionary government was in disarray in 1799. He promulgated a new constitution that stipulated that special laws would govern all French colonies. Others, like Toussaint, surmised that this would mean the reintroduction of slavery. To win Napoleon over, he pretended to be a Frenchman and was cautious not to declare complete independence. In addition to reaffirming Toussaint's authority as colonial governor, Napoleon pledged not to bring back slavery. In an effort to re-establish order following the departure of the Spanish, Napoleon also banned Toussaint from invading Santo Domingo, the eastern half of the island, where he held French authority. Toussaint could not resist the allure of total dominion over the entire island. His armies invaded Santo Domingo in January 1801, and they quickly took over. He started the country's modernization process, instituted French law, and ended slavery. Enraged by Toussaint's audacity, Napoleon dispatched 20,000 French troops, led by his brother-in-law, General Charles-Emmanuel Leclerc, in 1802, to retake the area. These men would be a powerful force against Toussaint because they were hand-picked for their involvement in the European campaigns. Even though he didn't live to witness it, Toussaint's deeds precipitated a chain of international events that altered the Western Hemisphere's topography and signaled the beginning of the end for European colonial dominance in the Americas. Napoleon Bonaparte, frustrated by an insurrection in Hispaniola that he was unable to quell, sold the Louisiana Territory to the United States in 1803, opting not to extend his empire into North America. The 19th century saw the West expand throughout this period, thanks to this. In addition, Toussaint's deeds galvanized American abolitionists to take up the fight against slavery and sparked revolutions in a number of Latin American nations during the course of the next century. Even though Toussaint was able to mount a valiant defense for a few months, his coalition ultimately broke down. The majority of the island's European and mulatto residents supported the French. Leclerc eventually gained the support of Henri Christophe and Dessalines, two of Toussaint's finest generals. By June of 1802, it was almost over. French General Jean-Baptiste Brunet wrote Toussaint an invitation to his quarters, ostensibly to discuss peace. After being detained there, Toussaint was transported to Fort de Joux in the French Jura Mountains. On April 7, 1803, after being questioned extensively, he passed away from starvation and pneumonia. Not too long afterward, Jean-Jacques Dessalines made another side switch and led rebel forces in opposition to the French. Dessalines' alliance of black and mulatto people won a string of victories that forced the French to give up and evacuate the island. Dessalines crowned himself emperor and declared his independence in 1804. Hispaniola emerged as the world's first autonomous black republic.